Robert. Good to see you. Good to see you too. How are happy you today? Tuesday. Yes, I'm happy good. Tuesday. <laughs> I like I'm the good. Tuesday. I, I like the Tuesday motivation ha hashtag. Monday gets all the motivation love. I don't like that. <laughs> Tuesday is just as good. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So um, I'm holding I'm, my phone in my hand. Uh, yes. So any, any uh, you know, random wobbly, uh, wobbly <laughs> is uh, to be expected, I guess. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Yeah. Uh, we should probably go around 20 minutes anyhow. So. I'll, I'll just watch the time for that and because otherwise your arm's going to be like falling off. <laughs> well, I'm in, a, I'm, in a, I'm in a comfortable chair, uh, so oh, uh, my, arm is, my arm is resting. It's okay. Good, good, good. Yeah. So maybe um, like I, you know, the, the cool thing about um, what we've done is just, just being an entrepreneur from a, a young, young, young age. Maybe could you share with everybody um, what made you step into, because you're a fine artist, uh, Canadian painter, and you have an art gallery in um, Alberta. And um, so maybe you could just share a little bit of your background and why you chose to become a painter and what gave you the courage to step into it? Sure. Uh, well, I grew up in it, uh, which is, you know, anybody who has had kids, which I haven't, but anybody who's had kids, uh, will often find that they tend to uh, become, you know, what they're used to. So lawyers make little lawyers and, mm -hmm. you know, accountants make little accountants and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, so I grew up in a family of artists. My dad was a full-time professional artist. My grandfather was a full-time professional artist. And a bunch of family friends were full-time professional artists. So it was, it was what was normal, you know, mm -hmm. and it was what I saw uh, growing up. And, not in the context of, of you know, the, the stereotypical uh, starving artists that everybody, a lot of people, I shouldn't say everybody, uh, assumes, but, you know, actual people who are professional and this is their livelihood and, and the way that they've supported their families and made their income. So uh, it was just a perfectly normal thing. And uh, I think also maybe to a degree um, art, or creativity might be possibly, you know, in the genes, yes. um, uh, possibly, but I think we'll, maybe we'll talk about this a bit more later, but I think also it's partly societal. Uh, so, but being, uh, you know, raised in a creative environment just made it a normal thing to do. Oh. I knew from when I was 13, for sure, uh, that, that I was going to be a professional artist. Wow. Yeah. So. yeah. It's like, you know, they, they say, be careful what words you speak over your kids and then, and then how you raise them is how you live. It's, I have a funny story. Tori and I were at, I can't remember. We went to, yeah, we went to the mall one day and we're looking around and we're like, why is it so darn busy? We couldn't figure it out. Like, why is it so busy today? What's going on? And then she's like, Oh mom, it's Saturday. We never go on Saturdays. And that's exactly because we're used to being able to say, Oh, I'm going to pop in on a Monday when everyone's at work. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, when you are kind of self-employed and, and a creative, uh, every day is kind of the same, you know, yeah. uh, I go to stores sometimes on a, you know, a, a Friday and, and someone will say, Oh, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, I'm working. <laughs> oh, no, they, they think it's a horrible thing. But I mean, you know, uh, Tuesday is, is just as good of a day to me as a Saturday or a Sunday. So exactly. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, should we, so should we, uh, should we remind people while we're at the beginning who we are to each other? Oh, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, you <laughs> go ahead. We're, you go ahead. Well, we're cousins yes. our, on our uh, on my father's side. Um, and my grandmother's grandma Wood's side. So my dad's mother's mm -hmm. side basically is where our connection is, I think. Um, yes. My, also my, my dad and your mom were cousins. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yes. So whatever that makes us. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes us third cousins. <laughs> I okay. think that makes us third, but that's, that's really cool. Um, uh, you know, um, my daughter, too, is named after Aunt Linnea. So my youngest daughter 
because I remember Aunt Linnea, right? Yeah. So, but we Linnea. we pronounce it Linnea. Linnea. Linnea, your grandmother, yeah. and um, who else? What else? Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah. So we I like Linnea, but we call her like it's her middle name anyhow. So and I remember as a child Aunt Linnea, right? So that's really cool, and I'm so yeah. glad we connected later in life because. Like well, that was you, you know, like, finding me, which I'm, yeah. I'm actually really easy to find. I'm probably one of the easiest people in the world to find because <laughs> you just have to put my name on Google and, you know, I'm there. Yeah, uh, and there you email. are, yeah. You know, so I can be found if anybody so maybe, wants to. You did, which is great. Yeah, I found you. Yeah, and, and it's funny. I'll share the story, okay? So what happened was is... Uh, we're around the same age, and but our family had, you know, lost contact for many, many years. And my mom would always talk about her cousin Carl, my, and she would always say, oh, my cousin Carl's a famous artist. And she would say how her, his work is throughout the Lower Mainland here and different community centers and things like that. So one day um, being, you know, thinking about my daughters the, the, and my son too is quite artistic and he plays mm -hmm. guitar and that sort of thing. And they all paint and all of that. But Tori's um, art just blew my mind. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to Google Carl Wood and see kind of what comes up. And then I found Robert Wood and I'm like, oh, his father was a painter as well. And then I found Robert Wood and I'm like, what's going on here? Robert E. Wood, who is this person? <laughs> and um, I talked to my mom about it. And yeah, she's like, yeah, she knew, Robert she knew. is his son. She, knew yeah, because... she knows you well, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So now people know. <laughs> so we're all connected and good. And, and I'm so thankful, very, very thankful to uh, yeah, connect fun. with you again later in life. And to me. It's fun that you're, that you're working in, in inspiring creativity you know, and right. inspiring people to, to kind of live their, their whole lives. Um, yes. And uh, I think that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about like, okay, so you started painting and yeah. I found your artwork in a gallery in Vancouver. Rendezvous and, Gallery. Vancouver, yes. Yeah. Yes. And you have an art gallery in Alberta. So you've done lots of painting over the years since you were what, 18, you became a professional painter? 18, yeah, November 1989, I started painting professionally, full-time, yeah. Wow. November, which I guess, what is that? Uh, that's gonna be 19 years this November. No, no, that's not 19 years. Longer, no, that, yeah. that's 29 years. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, I think yeah. it's longer, yeah, wow. Yeah long time um well i'm an artist not a accountant so right <laughs> <So> now, <laughs> totally. I, did that. I got the 29 uh anyway um yeah <laughs> it was 29 years ago and in november that i started painting full-time mm, nice nice so and so you went through uh, and you're still painting today and and not, not, not today but this week i have been yes Oh, <laughs> so you're still creating is what I mean. And you're doing an art show coming up too, right? Yeah, well, I'm doing um, a few things. I have a, uh, uh, in August, on August 11th, I'll be in a show in Kalispell, Montana at okay. the Hockaday Museum of Art, uh, which is fun and exciting because it is the uh, first time that I've shown in the U.S. and the first time uh, that, anyone in our family has shown in the US because my yes. dad and my grandfather never did. So that's kind mm -hmm. of a, a landmark. Uh, it's also nice because uh, it's a museum show and I was invited to be part of it. Uh, so it's always nice to you know get asked basically. Um, and I'm in there with a great group of artists, uh, American and Canadian artists, and we're celebrating the International Peace Park, uh, which is uh, the joint park of Waterton in Alberta and Glacier in Montana. Uh, wow. And so all of the artists have had to paint both parks uh, to be, you know, represented in this show. Uh, so that's exciting and fun. And, um, you know, we still have, at least the last time I checked the news, we still have peace uh, between yeah. our countries. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Uh, at least we can laugh about it, right? Um, right. Yeah. So I'm doing that. Uh, that's fun. And 
that was August 11th. And then I have a show uh, at our gallery here in Calgary, uh, Gainsborough Galleries, uh, in uh, November. So nice. I will be uh, working on paintings for that, uh, which is a one-person show. So I have to have a, a good amount of work for that. Uh, and then this Ooh. year, I my style, um, which is, they're not online yet. Um, I haven't actually oh. released, I haven't released any paintings this year. Um, wow. So what I did was I was in, because uh, we have a place in Mexico, and I was down there for three months this winter, and I didn't paint for three months. I worked on writing, which I, I know we'll talk about that too, but I worked on writing and I thought about painting. Ooh. And it, I looked online at art and, you know, I gave it thought because I wanted to do something fresh and something new and different. Uh, and I wanted to just, I mean, not completely necessarily totally different, but I wanted to change what I was doing and, mm. you know, make it different, fresher. So uh, I did come back from Mexico and I had this idea in mind. And uh, so I've done that and I've been doing uh, palette knife paintings. Oh. So paintings are completely executed with the uh, knife instead of using brushes. Uh, wow. So it's a different texture, a much more textural. I've been using a lot more color. Uh, they're more contemporary feeling. Um, I've right. still been focused on doing a lot of landscape, uh, rivers and forests and skies and things like that, um, but with a new style. So anyway, I have um, now got you know a, a decent number of paintings that I've painted and I'm just now starting to send the images of those out to my different galleries that represent my work mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, you know, have them pick some um, to show in their galleries. So they're, they're about to get out there, but they're not out there yet. So it's, it oh, takes, that's you know, it's, a, it's a process, it takes a long time. You know, mm -hmm. uh, for example, I think, I mean, three months, I didn't paint, I just thought about it. Yeah. Know? And and then uh, spending the next, I guess it's been over three months, uh, April, May, June, July. Yeah, it's been like four months now, just about um, doing paintings, but not actually getting them out of the studio yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's basically seven months without without any new work hitting galleries. And then it's, it, it drives me crazy when, you know, inevitably when as an artist, you're talking to people in a gallery situation or something, the, the first question almost always that you get asked is how, and they're looking at one particular painting, how long did it take you to do that? Mm. <laughs> well, first of all, it took 29 years because that's how long I've been painting professionally. You right. know, uh, the cumulative, you know, process to yes. learn. And then also, uh, I just spent three months thinking about <laughs> this new style. Uh, do you count that, you know? Yeah. Uh, it does and, you know, and I don't bill by the hour, so it doesn't matter how long it takes. You know, if I if I do a painting in in thirty days or thirty minutes, I mean, it it makes no difference to the quality of the work. So right. anyway, that, that's a I'm sure that's a rant that any artist will give you. <laughs> uh, so anyone out there, don't ask artists how long it took them to do a particular. <laughs> painting. That's but that's a good thing to know. A lot longer and a lot less than what you think. <laughs> mm hmm. I like that you took time to just rest and reflect and look at art. You know, I think a lot of people as creative entrepreneurs too, especially, it's good to like, I detach sometimes from certain things so that I can, and do something different. I always tell my mom, I'm like, I wanna just put some sort of new creativity in my brain so that I'm focused on that for a while and then come back to what I'm doing. Absolutely. That's you have to yeah. because I think if you do one thing all the time uh, creatively and and you're doing it a lot, I think you burn out. You know, I think it takes yeah. a huge amount of energy uh, that you're pouring into your 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 creative process and your work. And uh, I think yeah, the batteries run down if you if you keep mm -hmm. focusing on the same thing all the time, which is why yeah, you shift gears and you if you can it, it, do something else for a while, you know, which is for me, it was shifting gear from painting to writing for a while and, right. and just letting, letting the, 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 the painting uh, ideas uh, kind of percolate, you know, during that time and, and then coming back to it recharged and excited and fresh mm. and, you know, really having the energy to, to tackle something new. Uh, 
which yeah. when you're in the day to day uh, process of, of doing your work, um, you don't have the luxury of, of imagining something new. You're too busy doing the mm -hmm. thing that you're doing, you know? So yeah, you've right. got to recharge. Yeah, definitely. Was it a big jump for you to go to the new style? I didn't know you were doing that. Well, I haven't talked about it. My, if you look at yeah. my professional, my, my website uh, has no new artwork. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, my Facebook, uh, Robert E. Wood Fine Art page on Facebook has no new artwork. <laughs> it's because, you know, I've just been doing this new thing and I haven't been ready to share them yet, but um, that's about to happen. Uh, was, it, was it what? what? Was it difficult or...? Yeah, like, you know, like whenever we start something new, sometimes it could be either scary or it's like, oh, can I do that? Or did it feel like a big step to you? Or was it just like, no, I need to go in this direction. And you're like, let's go for it. Uh, I Well, I mean, I, I knew that I could do it. Um, mm -hmm. It was new. It was different. Uh, I had to kind of uh, maybe find my way with it. But um, yeah, I knew I could do it. I love things that are... Uh, challenging yeah you know? um i think if i'm not being challenged then i'm not doing it right yeah. um you're not, then you're not aiming high enough if you're not being mm -hmm. challenged so i think uh painting yeah i i always try to do something different um you know whether it's a different subject and now a different style um technique i think that that keeps it fresh and interesting and you know that's the thing with uh my screenwriting as well when i leapt into that about five years ago, uh, that's a huge learning curve. And I'm still on that huge learning curve. But that's partly what is interesting and exciting about it is that it is difficult. And it doesn't just, it doesn't just uh, come really easily. It, it actually takes, I mean, I love it, but it takes work. You know? Yes. And uh, so it's a, it's a good challenge always. Yeah, I like that. I say to people, I did a lot of writing on the internet for my information products and different things that I've been selling for years, but writing to sell a product is very different from writing a book. <laughs> you know, sure. it's a book is from the heart. So it's so totally different, you know? So I'd always say, I'd be, I'd be like a little bit fearful. So instead of thinking of being fearful, I would say, Oh, you know what? You're just having courage right now. You're just having courage, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, and um, uh, courage, uh, that, I think you use that word in some of your uh, promotions, don't you? Oh, I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> I probably do, because I think it's, it's really good... important for people to, to get excited and have courage and just go for it, you know, and do something that they never thought they could do. Because yeah. you're only like, I think to myself, I'm only going to be this age at this time place and time for this moment. Yeah. I'm only, you know, we right. have this one moment, well, right? Yeah, and you know what ties in with that too is the fact that my dad died when he was 46. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm 47, you know, so I'm, I'm older than he was when he died. So there's a sense of, um, yeah, don't, don't waste your time, you know? Mm -hmm. Do it all, yeah. do everything. And yeah. I think that, um, you know, I knew we were gonna be talking today about creativity. And uh, I think so much of creativity comes uh, from our uh, childhoods and, you know, how we're kind of programmed by uh, society and mm -hmm. by school and by all these things. And, you know, it, when you're a kid, um, someone will say to you, you know, well, pretend, uh, to, pretend to be the rain or pretend to be a hippopotamus yeah. or something. And kids just do it. Yeah. There's no uh, barrier between between their creativity, their their creative, uh, you know, expression, and uh, those those sort of mind barriers that we've all put up uh, over time. And it's the same thing with coloring. When you're a kid, uh, you get given crayons and coloring books, and you do you know blue faces and all these things, and then you gradually get programmed to not do that, to not do right. it creatively. You have to color within the lines. You know, yeah. and you have to use the the accurate color. You can't be uh, wild and crazy and creative anymore, like you were when you were younger. Now you've got to now you've got to do it the right way, you know, so called right, mm. and the proper uh, way, yeah, the proper way. So I think that you know we program. We all have been programmed 
uh, to different degrees throughout our lives mm -hmm. um, to do things in certain ways. And that makes it hard mm -hmm. for us to change and do something differently because it is ingrained, you know, from, from those days when we were taught how to color within the lines, you know, but that's, mm -hmm. you know, medical uh, speaking, but it goes in, in a lot of different aspects of our lives, you know, how we've been taught to do certain things and, and programmed, I think is even a better word than, than taught. Um, totally. You know, to do certain things in certain ways. Mm -hmm. So for people um, to uh, break out of that now mm -hmm. in whatever, if they're in their 20s or 30s or 40s or, you know, later years, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, to change your programming and to allow yourself to say, you know, I don't want to work in a cubicle anymore. I want to mm -hmm. become a writer or I, wanted, I, want, I don't want to uh, work for somebody else anymore. I want to start my own business, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and have an expression of their own creativity or their own lives or whatever in that way. Uh, I think um, it's a difficult thing to do, but I, I, it's great that there's people like you who help people do that, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, that's, that's, that's why we're talking today, I think, is, is to, um, for anybody who might be interested in, in doing something creative in their lives, um, I, I think that's kind of our purpose maybe here today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just love to see people like my niece just started a blog and um, I'm excited for her because she's going to have products around it and she's actually yeah. hand making them. And so I'm excited about that because there's, there's heart around it and she's What's she's she so excited about it. She's making, I don't know if I can let the cat out of the bag, but I don't <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you can, you can see, you can, this is a teaser and people yeah. will hear about it later yeah watch watch for details coming soon yeah. <laughs> but yeah she's I love the fact and I I encourage everyone in the family like if you have something that you want to share with the world get it out there and it doesn't matter if anyone tells you you can't do it just do it because it's yeah. none of their business <laughs> you just do it yeah, totally. yeah. well and that's a fear too people are afraid you know what's oh what are what's the family going to say what are friends going to say what yeah. is, you know Co-workers are, you know, if people going to judge you or make fun of you because you're following a dream, I, you right. know, I have have I have things that I love in my life that are I hold on to from childhood, you know, yeah. and and things that I love then that I still love. Uh, I wrote a book about a TV series uh, called Space 1999, which yes. is a science fiction TV series from the 70s, and I loved it then, and I love it now, and I wrote, you know, the book on the show basically called Destination Moon Base Alpha. And, you know, it's been in print for a number of years and, you know, sold really well around the world. Um, but, you know, to a lot of people, they would think, oh, it's a, you know, a, a, a che it isn't cheesy, but there was, it's a cheesy science fiction, you know, show from the 70s, uh, you know, right. and, and it's it left in your childhood or something like that, you know. I don't think it is. I think if you love something, why can't you have that as an interest, you know? Uh, yes. Science fiction, you know, is a great example because people make fun of, some people make fun of people who um, are into, you know, science fiction and, you know, go to conventions and, you know, uh, like Comic Expo, Comic Con and that kind of thing, which is now becoming much more mainstream and people dress up in cosplay right. and this kind of thing, yeah. which is becoming more mainstream and that's terrific, you know, but there was a long time when, when, uh, yeah. uh, you know, people, they were shunned and that's where the word fan comes from is fanatic you know mm -hmm. um so uh anyway it's just another way of express of, of holding on to things that you love and uh that, yes. that you think are fun and who cares what anybody else thinks <laughs> exactly exactly so so you got into writing books so i think you've written quite a few hey <laughs> what have, what um, um what types of books have you written well, uh, some are written and some are co-written uh, or or edited by. Um, so it's de it's varied depending on on what the book is. Uh, the one I was just mentioning about Space Time Ten Nine, that one I wrote. Um, yes. Then there were um, there was well one of the, probably the most notable other one uh, is called Remember with Advantages, and that is uh, something that I edited co-edited uh, mm -hmm. with a friend of mine in Oregon. Uh, which is the life story, the memoirs 
of a wonderful actor called Barry Morse, who mm -hmm. passed away uh, in 2008. Uh, but he uh, was a British Canadian actor. People would remember him from uh, Space 1989, uh, mm -hmm. from the original series of The Fugitive. Uh, he did a lot of other things. Anyway, okay. I was friends with him for uh, about the last uh, 15 years of his life, worked with him on all kinds of different uh, projects, uh, along with my other friend, uh, Anthony Wynn, um, who has just moved to Texas um, mm -hmm. from Oregon. But anyway, that's not the point. Uh, <laughs> we, we did this uh, book, uh, Barry's Memoirs, and we both edited it. Uh, for him. Then we did a couple of other books with Barry, um, or for Barry, books about theatrical history, uh, which Barry was a huge aficionado of. So there's one book called uh, Stories of the Theater, uh, which has stories of theatrical history in it. Um, there's a photo book of Barry's life called um, uh, something I can't remember right now. Um, <laughs> doesn't matter, uh, a photo book of his life. Uh, there's a, yeah. a, a terrific book that I really love that Tony and I, uh, Anthony Wynn and I wrote together, uh, which is called Valiant for Truth. And okay. that one is about Barry Morse and his lifelong connection with the, the uh, really great famous playwright, George Bernard Shaw. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an, uh, you know, a really interesting kind of slice of theatrical uh, history. And mm -hmm. it's a, I think it's a, it's a book I'm very, very proud of because it's, it's uh, got a lot of things in it, a lot of interesting elements in it. Uh, Valiant for Truth. Um, mm -hmm. There were a couple of others I did that aren't in print anymore. There's an, uh, another memoir by, of an actress that I edited, uh, not in print anymore. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure how many, uh, yeah. anyone counting out there. Uh, there I think there's at least, at least five, uh, plus a couple five. that five plus, I think maybe two more that aren't in print anymore. So I think maybe seven. You know what I love about um, uh, finishing the book that I just wrote was that now I don't feel as scared. <laughs> I have more courage to do another one, you know, and it's kind of fun. Like yeah. I want to kind of do a series, right? And yes. it starts with her life counts. And um, then I'm going into my secret awakening. And the cool thing about my secret awakening is it's not a book to read. It's a, it's actually going to be a workbook. It's going to be a book where women can open up and say, okay, now this is the work I need to do for my life. And this is the steps I need to take and let's get on with it. And let's stop dreaming about things in our heart and let's put it into action because the world needs it. Right. Yes. So, yes. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. 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 So I love you're, books. Books are like you're, tattoos. You're, you're, <laughs> Yeah, you, you do one, you've got to get more, got to do more. <laughs> I know. I was not expecting that feeling, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I have, I have, you know, other book ideas that are sitting, you know, partly completed in the computer and, you know, at some point I'll probably get back to them. They're not yeah. on the top of my list right now because I've been working in screenwriting. Right. Um, and I haven't uh, had anything produced yet, but, you know, these things take time. Um, so I'm so working what... on... What got you into screenwriting? Like, why, why, why the step into screenwriting? Well, it was a shift that happened after Barry Morse died, actually, because mm -hmm. when he died, uh, Anthony Wynn and I were working on several projects with him that we had to complete uh, to bring to fruition after his passing. And so we did that. It took several years. Um, and then as that was wrapping up, uh, it kind of occurred to me, you know, there's this, this wonderful kind of 15 year uh, project that I've been on with him, you know, mm -hmm. that isn't going to be there anymore. So mm -hmm. kind of it's a void that's happening with, and how was I going to fill that void? And at that time, um, a friend of mine in Montreal, uh, a couple friends of mine in Montreal were uh, working at starting a, uh, a little upstart film production company. And one of the projects that they were wanting to work on was a potential reboot. Uh, well, I shouldn't say reboot. Uh, that's the wrong word. It's a potential sequel series to Space 1989. And so mm -hmm. I saw they were working on this and I wrote my friends and I just said, you know, hi, uh, can I come, you know, play with you guys for a while? Um, you know, I'd love to do that. I'd love to work on that. And uh, the answer was, yeah, of course, do it come so 
I got involved at that point. Um, uh, I got paired up with a writer in New Jersey uh, called uh, Steve Warnick. And uh, he and I had never, you know, met or anything. Paired up together to, to write this script. And uh, we did, uh, working with, uh, in conjunction with uh, a fellow called Christopher Penfold, who is the original story editor and writer of many of the greatest scripts from the actual series in the 70s. And he's done lots of other great things. So he's been kind of, a, uh, well, he has been not kind of, definitely he's been a mentor, uh, you know, in these last five or six years as I've Ooh. been working on screenwriting. Steve Warnick had already done screenwriting. He'd written a uh, episode of Star Trek, uh, Deep Space Nine uh, and other scripts as well. So he was also, he's also been a great teacher and we've become great friends. I was just down in Florida at his house there for a week in June. Uh, we were working on a script together in person again. Um, so yeah, so that's how it happened. It was, it came out of uh, another phase of my life ending or coming to a close and yeah. my creative life. And, and out of that uh, door closing, uh, where could I open a new door? And so I just looked around at, and this could be useful to people actually, in the sense of, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to do something, where do you go? How, where do you look? Well, first of all, look at your friends, you know, mm -hmm. look at the people that you know, your contacts on Facebook and at Twitter and anywhere else uh, in the world that you have connections. Mm -hmm. And what are they doing? And is there anyone who's doing something that you think could be interesting or fun to join in? Um, and then you just say, hey, you know, can I come play with you? Um, yes. Basically, you know, to use another childhood analogy there. Mm -hmm. um, and you might be surprised. They may say yes. You know, and yeah. then you've got a whole new, whole new door opening. Uh, and so, yeah, and it could take a lot of years and a lot of work. And you may not get anywhere. But you're mm -hmm. never going to get anywhere if you don't try, right? So, mm -hmm. so why not try? Why not do it and have a fun time? in the process, you know, it's been great fun. I've, I've spent money doing it. I've made nothing doing it uh, <laughs> over the last six years, but I've had a great time doing it and I've mm -hmm. learned a lot doing it. And I've uh, had great experiences. It's taken me uh, to Montreal a number of times. It's taken me to Florida a couple of times. It's taken me to New York City. It's taken, well, New Jersey as well. It's taken me to, uh, to London and England mm -hmm. and, uh, it's taken me to Wales, uh, which mm -hmm. I've you know, never been to Wales before. But Christopher Penfold has a house there. And one of our writing, because we, we all get together on uh, for weekends or for weeks, uh, periodically, mm -hmm. whenever we can make it happen, to work together. Uh, we, it's great working long distance, but occasionally it's better to work in person. You can get a lot done. Yeah. And it's wonderful to yeah. have that you know, friendship and camaraderie together. So uh, Christopher mm -hmm. has a house in Wales, and we... Uh, we went there one time for one of our writing get togethers. Um, yeah. A lot of, a lot of green hills and a lot of sheep. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. When you get in a new space, you just, you can be creative in a different way too. And, and yeah. you're leaving things behind, which is really nice. I interviewed uh, years ago, uh, Frank McKinney. He's a, uh, uh, what he does is he builds these houses and is, okay. he, he is just one blueprint and then he auctions off the house and then he takes the money because it sells for gazillion dollars, right? <laughs> he takes the yeah. money and then he builds um, villages in Haiti. And oh. he has a tree house. He built himself a tree house to go and write his books in, in his tree house. So that's, that's the coolest great. thing ever. I want to come to your tree house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and again, that's, that's um, reaching back to childhood, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. We're so blessed because our, our parents, both of us, had, I, my, my parents weren't painters. My, my dad did grunt work. So it was like roofing and fishing and he installed screens in people's homes. So I did, a, I was on the roof at like eight, nine, 10, 11 years old, shingling. I learned how to shingle and take the shingles off. I learned how okay. to hammer the new ones anything. on. <laughs> if I need a new roof, I know who to call. <laughs> no, I'm not good with heights today. I'm terrible with heights. 
Teresa, my okay. sister Teresa, she's the one you call to come fix your roof because she okay. she she was older. She's about fifteen, so she could carry the bundles up the ladder. And right. once the bundles got up, we had the new shingles, and Dad taught me how to do all that. So, but you know, we're just it's it's it is a huge blessing to grow up that way and mm -hmm. and not and just feel like it's a normal thing to do and step into. You know, it's, yeah. So is there any last, um, what, well, first off, what are you up to these days? You've got your new contemporary art coming out. When is mm -hmm. that coming out? Uh, well, very soon. <laughs> Give me a very date. Soon. What? <laughs> I don't have a date. It depends on, it depends on, uh, it depends on me and my emails to gal to the galleries and the galleries yes. emailing back to me and shipping and then getting the paintings to the galleries. But, um, you know, I think that it'll be uh, uh, within, it, we, we, it, some of it could start happening within about a week. Nice. Uh, nice. So it's going to be fairly soon. And um, when that happens, it'll, it'll, it'll hit my website uh, with a big update, uh, which is long overdue. And it'll hit uh, my, my uh, Robert E. Wood Fine Art uh, Facebook page. Um, as it hits the different gallery websites. So that'll be coming really soon, yeah, yeah. And uh, the show in Montana on August 11th mm -hmm. at the Hockaday Museum, uh, the show at Gainsborough in November, and uh, yeah, a lot more painting, a lot more writing, uh, some teaching. Uh, I don't do too much teaching right now, but occasionally I get asked to do a workshop. Yeah. Um, and I have one booked in November for an art group here in Calgary. So, you know, those are, those are fun things to do as well. I'm excited to do a little bit more painting too. I like painting flowers, but I can't do anything. Well, I shouldn't say I can't, right? Oh, that's right. terrible. Get that out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. To, if you want to, you can. You can learn. You can do you know. anything. You can do anything. Yep. And I yep. sold my first painting. So um, I'm, I'm a professional artist now. So, <laughs> But I've only done like three paint, three or four paintings. But I really prefer, I love painting flowers. Yeah, that's okay. my favorite. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. <laughs> Excellent. So. Yeah, that's great. That's fun. So um, is there anything, any last thoughts? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, were, were there any questions that uh, anyone had? Oh, anyone? yeah, good, good idea. Yeah, if anyone yeah. has any questions, yeah, just post them. And if they're watching later, then we can answer them later. I'm sure we'll see, the, see it right. tagged on Facebook. But yeah, I you think can, it's, it's good that. for on my end here. Oh yeah, no, I don't see any questions coming through. I see people watching, and um, yeah, it's just it's wonderful to um, just share who you are. I'm you know I'm gonna put this out for sure. And um, is there any last ideas or thoughts or just one little tidbit you could give to someone who's thinking about? maybe a career, a career change or actually, you know, taking a sidestep in their career, like I did with the book or like you did with your art. Um, any any th words of encouragement? Yeah, uh, well, first of all, do it, um, you know, and don't be afraid. Um, we're, you know, I think people are too afraid of things. Um, that holds mm -hmm. you back a lot. So just do it. But then also, um, uh, yeah, try to, try to find an uh, avenue to a professional uh, who is doing the thing that you want to do because so they're cool. the ones, they're the ones who have the actual working, you know, on the, on the ground knowledge of, of what it is. Mm -hmm. And if that is uh, writing a book or a screenplay or painting or uh, you know, starting a business or whatever, you know, may, maybe you don't have any friends or family who happen to have those connections right now, but maybe you can take a class. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's there's always places. I know, for example, here in Calgary, uh, there are uh, art studio uh, places often connected with art supply stores where you can go take classes. And some of the teachers are really good professional painters you know you can yeah. get great uh, avenues for for learning things uh by taking classes and uh you know writing uh there's you know master class online 
Um, you know, th that's mm -hmm. an example of something where you can sign up and I, you know, learn from people like Margaret Atwood and amazing people, yeah. uh, get their insights into it. Uh, read books, you know, look yeah. online. There's endless amounts of information. Volunteer, volunteer. Volunteering, sure, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, there's all these avenues that you can pursue. So, you know, never say to yourself, you know, I'd, oh, I'd love to do this, but I can't because, you yeah. know, the doors are closed for me. I don't have any connections. You know, I don't know the right people or whatever. Uh, I mean, it is about who you know, <laughs> but, but, but you, can, you can make new connections. You know, yeah. you can do it just by uh, looking around and, uh, you know, as I say, finding the people that you know, or finding other people that, that are teaching classes or have written blogs or published books or whatever. Uh, so do it. Yeah, yeah. just do it. If you, if you want to change your life, if you want to do something uh, for yourself, you know, mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, a happy heart is a good heart. And uh, I'm, I'm just so happy to have you here and to talk to you I'm today. To and, and that we're we've, cousins. We've tried this for We've tried to do this for quite a while, actually. I know uh, you're always on the road. <laughs> or, well, you're busy too. Uh, you're true, busy too. true, very true. <laughs> it's you've not got just... books to write, and you've got you've got people to uh, to to consult, and you know, all these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Tell for some of the people who might be listening, who are listening because they know me, uh, and we've been heard me talking all this time. I'm just going to ask you. Why don't you uh, just quickly tell tell those people who are listening who aren't followers of your Vera JM blog, uh, and yes. who aren't who aren't knowledgeable about what you do uh, professionally? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell those people what it is that you do uh, in terms of helping people? You know, find do what we've been talking about. Find new avenues in totally. life. Totally. Oh well, thank you for asking. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I work on. I work with uh, companies who need to rebrand. Uh, I typically like to work with companies who have been in business for many years. Um, but yeah, I love to, to, if someone's starting new, I love to set, put together their brand and really think about how we're going to portray that and put it out to the world and then make sure everything's in place so that they can get out and do what they are called to do. And also, you know, stuff that's going to make them money and generate income for their family and that sort of thing too. And um, yeah, so that's what I do. And um, that's why it's so important for me too, in my heart for women to, you know, go for their dreams and, and do what, what they want to do in life, you know, and if you want to start a company, just do it. You want to start a business, just do it, you know. So some, of your, some of your consulting is to individuals as well as not just. Yes, companies. yes, I do one-off, uh, I have uh, coaching clients as well, and right. um, yeah, so I, I do one-off clients, and I enjoy that, but I only open it up uh, once per year to work with me because I have, um, I'm a business partner with um, Al, who's a, a DJ here in the city, and we do four events every year for Make-A-Wish. So I have a lot on my plate that I really enjoy, like that I personally enjoy doing. So I open up to clients only once per year. So, and that keeps me focused on them as well during my quiet time, which is usually the beginning of uh, the year, you know, January to March kind of time. So. Yeah, there's only so much that there's only so much that any one person can do. Right. You, know, you have to you have to divide your time and focus it in order to accomplish all the things that you want to deal with. Yes. Um, that's the other thing creatively that 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 we have to do uh, or creative people have to do is is schedule your time effectively. Yes. Yes. Uh, because when you don't have to show up at the office, you know, from nine to five or whatever it is, um, you you still have to do that for yourself. You know, was, whatever, yes, those hours might, whatever those hours might be, uh, it may be, it may be, you know, in the night, it may be in the afternoon, it may be in the early morning, whenever you work the best. Um, yeah. But you have to figure that out for yourself. You still have to devote the hours of work to, yes. to whatever it is you want to do. And uh, motivate not... yourself to do it because no one's going to tell you to do it. You don't have a boss. You're the boss. You need That's to right. do it, you know. I used to yeah. tell people too that, you know, I, if I don't have something on the, cause I had used to have the retail stores, mm -hmm. if I don't have something out for sale, like to show people, 
If it's not on the shelf, I'm not selling it. So it's the same thing. If I'm not doing the work, it's not going to get done, you know? That's right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. That's a good, that's a good way of, uh, of signing off too. <laughs> it's inspirational. If we're not doing the work, it's not getting done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you have a wonderful day, Robert. And it was Thank so you. great chatting with you. And I look forward to following your new contemporary art journey and, and following that and seeing I how will that let goes. You know. As soon as, as soon as I hit the uh, the internet, I'll let you know. Okay, sounds good. Have a great day, okay. Robert. Bye. You too. Bye.